live, 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 folks. So, uh, good morning, everybody. It's Leaders Live Time, and I'm Andrew Jenkins, and this is a short countdown timer to make sure all the feeds are working properly. Here's the countdown timer. I forgot that scene. Uh, help the various feeds catch up and settle down. And we can't wait for today's groovy show, folks. We're just waiting for the feed to properly come up in LinkedIn. And... Uh, yeah, we hang out with our Leaders Live regular guest, Tilly Davis, who's been on quite a few times. And uh, say hello to us, Tilly. Hi. Brilliant. There we go. And please give us some comments that um, we're, we're live as soon as you're live. That would be useful. Here we go. That's where we are on. Lovely. Ah, so we can't wait for today. And uh, Tilly Davis, CEO of um, Marketing CX. LinkedIn specialist highlighting the elements required to set up a great LinkedIn foundation that will help any business gain LinkedIn success. Guaranteed, folks, guaranteed. How good is that? How? By turning your leads into gold. And this is the 98th show, folks. 98th show. Look at that. Almost at the 100. Yay, we can't wait. I think that deserves a... a yay, it's going to find that. And that's the wrong one, but never mind. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Lovely. And uh, yeah... So our theme today is LinkedIn magic, how to turn your leads into gold. And uh, we've got sales office two at the end of the show. And uh, we've got Mrs. Moderator in the room as well. Say hello to us, Sarah. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Super, yeah, the people are joining in. Lovely, got a good crowd today, that's great. So with Tilly, me, Sarah, Ghost, our sponsors and Marketing CX, that's the team for today. Here we go. Boom, there we are. We love that little opener um, for Ghost, our sponsors. A little bit more about them later, just so you know. So, oi, oi, people, and hi, gang. It's the Leaders Live showtime again, folks. It's just after 8.45 a.m. in the UK, here in the UK. And so we are, we're live, live, live. We, we love it when we go live. We love it indeed when we go live. And because you never quite know whether we are live or not, but we're definitely live today. So spreading the love, yabba dabba do. And I hope you enjoyed the groovy opener as well, gang. And I hope our audio is coming through okay as well. Clearly it must be because people are responding to my voice. So that's great. So if you're new to Leaders Live, a warm welcome to you. And Leaders Live is a dynamic weekly talk show that generates business through networking, through community, through extraordinary conversations that inspire. And as I mentioned in the countdown, I'm Andrew Jenkins, and I host this interactive weekly Leaders Live show that's built an awesome community of like-minded leaders. So please don't be shy. We'd love, love, love you to introduce yourselves as people are doing at the moment. Please let us know who you are and, and that you're online with us and enjoying the show and uh, yeah join in interact with the comments chat ask questions as we go along there's plenty of interaction here that's the whole point in the show uh, but we have three simple rules folks a safe community mutual respect and please 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 no selling in the room and our motto is i to the power of we and a really easy way that you can appreciate all the work that goes into this show, and boy, there's a huge amount of work that goes into this show, is um, you can buy me a coffee um, using the buymecoffee.com uh, app, uh, buymecoffee.com backslash leaders live or forward slash, never know which way around it is. Um, buy me five, you get a free coaching session, and it looks a little bit like this, folks. I'll just do a quick test for you. So it comes up like this. And uh, yay, and you get a little name there if you put your email address in. So just a bit of fun, but uh, it keeps the show moving. And um, yeah, please smash those likes as well as we're going along, folks. And I uh, love that bell. And uh, we'd really appreciate that. That keeps us motivated too. And so this show talk enables uh, you to listen to great content. But there's so much more when you subscribe to our email list. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we'd love you to subscribe. And the links will be um, available shortly, um, Sarah or... Um, Marketing CX will pop those in the link for us. So, phew, put it all together. What do we got? Bibbidi, bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. There we are. So, let's bring in our weekly leaders live guest this morning, our hangout guest this morning. Good morning, Tilly Davis. Yay. Yay. <laughs> all the way from South Africa with load shedding. So, uh, yeah, we, um, Tilly is on a uh, UPS device at the moment, which uh, gives her power um, as. Um, and the South African government tends to drop your power off for a few hours every day, doesn't it, Tilly? Yes, it does. So I am operating on battery power. On battery power. There we go. So, uh, yeah. So our theme this morning, Tilly, is um, LinkedIn magic. How to turn your leads into gold. Tell us a bit about that. Tell us a bit about your background. And, um, yeah, um, just kick us off with that for a moment. 
Um, Andrew, thank you. And thank mm. you for being on the show again. I love being part of Leaders Life, uh, both in the background as well as in the front. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, <Hey. I'll> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Someone's bought me a coffee. 98 not out. Lovely. Thank you very much. Well, now that we could, can I share your coffee with you? <laughs> no, it's mine. <laughs> 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 um, well, Andrew, I basically come from a technical background. I'm yeah. not a born marketer, salesperson. I spent um, the majority of my career in the IT sector. Mm. Um, but I started getting a little bit curious about the social media platforms when it all started in 2003, 2004. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn really just appealed to me because it's a professional uh, platform. Yeah, so um, when I became the CEO of Call Center Hub here in South Africa, we decided that we're going to grow the company on the strength of LinkedIn. And that is really where my journey with LinkedIn started. Um, I used my technical background to understand the platform. Brilliant. Because I figured out if I can figure out how LinkedIn as a technical um, system works, how difficult can it be? Well, <laughs> we cracked the code and um, we had some huge successes with LinkedIn in call center hub. So okay. when I sold the company in 2015, I decided to start marketing CX, marketing for the customer experience and uh, show other people how to use LinkedIn effectively in their businesses as a tool to grow your business. Um, and yeah, in the past eight years, we've had some huge fun. Uh, we are based in South Africa, but we are an international company. Um, the vast majority of my clients are overseas. Um, mm live in the UK. A lot of <laughs> I live online by Zoom in the UK. I love it. Yeah. Well, uh, currently with our temperatures here in South Africa, I might as well be in the UK. It's freezing. <laughs> it's 11 degrees. So <laughs> the, it's really funny because you, you lot in South Africa, you moan at 11 degrees. You know, it's 12 for us and we're in t shirts So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'm, I'm wrapped up. You're wrapped up, <laughs> blankets and all. So yeah, different, different bodies. <laughs> different bodies isn't it and different heats and i know in south africa it's very hot in the in the summer doesn't it and uh, our summers are um are usually in about the 20s where yours are in the 30s and 40s right you know we we have a saying in south africa if it's below 30 we need jerseys oh i like that if, if it's below 30 you need jerseys how about that so tilly you've got um you've got a couple of questions for us to kick us off in terms of an audience to get the audience going so what, what are your questions for us as the audience or the guys listening uh, well the first question mm. i really have for the audience is uh, who in the audience got a client via linkedin in the last week or so lovely but but with that question, I would also like to know who generates at least one marketing qualified lead on a daily basis just from their activities on LinkedIn. Okay, so first question was, um, who got a client via LinkedIn in the last week or so? The, the questions will follow in the feed shortly. In fact, there they are. Sarah's popped them in. Thanks, Sarah. And secondly, who generates at least one marketing qualified lead every day on LinkedIn? Ooh, interesting question. Um, fantastic. Ooh. So there's a bit of a delay in the feed. So please get typing away so that we can respond to those questions. And in the meantime, let me just introduce our moderator, Sarah Jenkins, Mrs. Moderator in the room. How are you doing, Sarah? Oh, I'm, I'm very happy today. The comments are coming up. All is, all is well in the technical <laughs> world. <laughs> all is well. We sometimes get LinkedIn just doesn't give us um, the ability to do simple things like cutting and pasting, you know, so. Uh, well, oh, that, that's yeah. a bit too advanced for me. But um, yeah, the. Yeah. The comments are coming up, so it's good to see some new names. Brilliant. Um, good morning, Andy Gray, Jim Wolf, Mike Swan, Rachel Haith. Hey, yeah. hi, Rachel. Um, yeah, Stuart, Christopher Beekmans. Um, yeah, good to see you all on board, and we're looking forward to hearing your comments. 
Brilliant. Sorry, and man. the 98 Not Out. Who was that from, Sarah? That's Kieran. Hello, Kieran. Brilliant. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Fantastic. 98 yeah. Not Out is uh, good. You'll have all members in the bar putting down their drinks when the first hundred comes up on the board. Yay! That's what we want. That's a couple of shows away. So there we fantastic. go. So we're getting, Brilliant. Some, we're getting some replies coming in already. So, Mateus, okay. there's no client through LinkedIn in the past week, but during mm. the last month. Oh, okay. Good. So that's right. good. Uh, mm. Colin Tovey. Hello, Colin. Uh, neither for them no neither for them okay uh christopher beekman oh hi christopher i'd say i have a prospect within the last week but definitely not daily no okay uh andy gray haven't a clue where to even start all <laughs> of this word of mouth so looking forward to learning listen and learn andy hopefully it'll be really informative for you i'm sure it will be brilliant uh rachel sadly not me and that's for both questions okay. so it, it, it's a lot of no's actually mm. um yeah so Lots to learn, I think, Tilly. Yeah. Okay, mm. super. Right, oh. okay. So let's bring in... Uh, whoops, that's not the one I wanted, but we can start there. That's fine. So, yeah. Um, so just before you begin and get going, let's just give you a quick round of applause. <laughs> we, we love that. So, uh, yeah. So um, very briefly then. So our first question, let's, uh, let's just bring that up. Feel the love, Tilly, by the way. Hope you like the groovy build-up. So when it comes to lead generation, um, you know, starting off, you know, you advocate that this begins for us all with the simple stuff like our LinkedIn profiles, Tilly. So, you know, how do we measure what good looks like in this context to get us going in terms of, you know, the context of lead generation? You know, what practical things should we include in our profile and be mindful of what creates a great profile as well to set the scene for good lead generation to follow on from that? So take it away for us, Tilly, and we'll get deeper into this as we go along. Yeah, I think um, the one thing that I would like to point out as far as the LinkedIn profiles is concerned, uh, Andrew, you know, I think we're all getting sick and tired of hearing you need to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's it just becomes such a saying. You, you, you've got to have an optimized LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. And I think we spend too little time on understanding the role of the, the profile. Yeah. And what we need to understand about LinkedIn, and um, this is something I advocate loudly and train all of my coaching clients as well, is LinkedIn built a funnel for us, a marketing funnel. Ooh, now, if you take... If you, look at LinkedIn from a structure point of view. You get the LinkedIn profile, that's a given when you open your account, and then you get the page and then you get the group, and that is the order, and that is the structure of the funnel. So it starts with the profile in the sense that is where everything starts. That's where everything happens and as you build relationships on the profile level you then push it down to first the page to introduce your business as a brand leader and then to the group to build an online community for yourself within the linkedin space now the profile itself is where you build your personal brand so optimization of the profile really in essence is building a personal brand but what's important about optimizing your profile and it goes quite a lot deeper um, than just saying the right words and telling people what you're all about it has to be customer centric, customer -centric. and what i mean what i mean by customer centric it's not about you it's about <laughs> them you've literally three seconds when a person lands on your profile think about it like a website yeah. when a person lands on your profile they want to say oh my word she's talking to me how did she know I was looking for this so you've got to be able to not only focus on the fact it's not about you it's about them but you also need to use their language you need to use the words they will use when they're looking for solutions. Um, one thing that's important about the profile is, remember, we are all on LinkedIn to promote our businesses. So when a person lands on your profile, they're not there to buy your stuff. 
they're there to sell you. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to disrupt them very quickly. And that all happens at what we call above the fold. Your banner, your profile picture, and your headline is critical. And it's not a matter of that I help people to do this. I think we've seen enough of those. Yeah. What you need to do is you need to go in and have a headline that details their problem and details the solution they are looking for. Not the solution you provide, the solution they are looking for. And this is where the discord sometimes happens. Now, if you can, if you can get past that and grab their attention right from the beginning, right. um, we've mapped the customer journey through your profile. So once you grab the attention, the first thing they're going to do is look for the about section, because now they want to learn more about you. Okay. And what most people do in the about section is this is where the resume type of profile comes in, where they start explaining what they can do for you and why it works and all of those nice stuff. So, you know, I come from a technical background. I've been on LinkedIn 17 years and I've helped people is not the way to go. You want to continue with disrupting the audience. Disrupt. And the about section is really what I call where you need to go and tell their story, not your story, their story. They need to read. I know this is the problem that you have. And I know what you're looking for. Mm. So you need to keep on telling their story in the about section. And you've now really got them very engaged and very curious. Because the next place they're going to stop because they really want to get to know you is they're going to go down to your experience. But again, what you shouldn't be doing is giving your resume and tell them why you are qualified to help them. You should tell them what you do and how you do it and why it works. Because that, in fact, is they now understand that you understand them. Yeah. And they want to understand the solution that you have for them. Okay. But so, it all starts with them, right? It all starts with them. And that is what's critical. And that is why I say, you know, we, I think we've um, overemphasized the fact that the profile needs to be optimized. I think we need to understand the customer centricity around the profile. Now, in order to set up a profile like this, it takes a lot more than just to go out and quickly optimize it. Yeah. Yeah. So the word optimizing is like, yeah, that's old news now. And what we're looking at is customer centric profiles about and the experience that all link together, but actually show very quickly you know, that you can um, identify with the client's needs, with the customer needs. And then also in the about section lower down is to provide the solution as well. Is that correct? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. That's exactly correct. So, you know, the first thing is you need to get the uh, attention. Yeah, which the is the headline. The second thing is, yeah. which is the headline. The second mm. thing is you need to tell them their story so that they can understand that you understand them. They understand and them. Then, you know, and then the third one is tell your story, but in their language. Gotcha. Not oh, yours. Right. So their story in your language and even the solution in their language, not your language, right? Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. So there's a good starter for 10 on the profile. And remember, folks, that you know, you've know you got the profile, then underneath that, the company page, and then the, the group structure. Um, and all of that lot is important as well, Tilly, which we'll come on to later. Tilly, we did this poll a couple of weeks ago um, for you um, because we were supposed to do this show um, last week and it, uh, the week before, sorry, and it fell over, didn't it? And so this mm -hmm. is what the poll that we did then um, and I thought this was quite interesting. Which of the following LinkedIn tactics do you find most effective for generating leads? So we're getting a little bit deeper now, getting into lead generation a little bit. And these were the, the answers that, um, or the questions which, uh, or the options for the poll, which was consistent content shares, engage uh, and network, 
identify leads via Sales Navigator, 3% interesting, and LinkedIn Group, 6%. And it's really interesting, isn't it? 44% you know, content shares, 47% engage, and the other two are trailing way behind in terms of Sales Nav and LinkedIn Groups. What say you? <clears throat> um, it's interesting because um, LinkedIn Groups and Engage and Network goes hand in hand. Mm. In actual fact, if you go to other people's LinkedIn groups and you don't spam it with content, um, your own content, right. you can get a lot of engagement going within the LinkedIn groups. But fact of the matter is, um, Andrew, um, you're not going to get consistent content shares without engaging. Um, you know, just a, a quick tip here and i'll give away a couple as we go along <laughs> a, hot minute, tip from tilly. a hot tip from, from tilly <laughs> in a very cold south africa so <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you need to do guys is the minute that you post content on linkedin go and engage don't leave don't go and use these automation tools and post your content while you're sleeping Okay. Go and manually post your content. And the minute that you do that, go and engage on other people's posts. And I don't mean go and like it or comment by saying, oh, this was a nice post. Go and post content in the comments on other people's posts. Yeah. What sort we of content? Like ask questions, you know, engage with it, get a conversation going. Is that what you mean? That's what I mean. Right. In other words, when you start and especially go look for influencers posts. Okay. And if you want to get more engagement and more shares on your content, don't leave after you post it. Stay on the platform and go and engage on other people's posts. But um, you've got to ask questions. You've got to voice your own opinion. You've got to position yourself as a thought leader on the subject that you are commenting on. You need a paragraph or two, three when you comment. Okay. So, two, that, three you can, so mm. that you can drive traffic to your profile, which you're going to, you'll see your profile views goes up. And the minute the uh, people land on your profile, they are going to go to your all activities and start engaging with your ah, content. So that's the link there then back to the post that you did previously and connect yeah. the two together so that people get a better sense of you quicker. Is that what I'm hearing, Tilly? Um, um, exactly, Andrew. You know, I see it so often that uh, people complain that they're not getting engagement on their content. Mm. And just by telling them, don't leave after you've posted, stay on the platform, stay active, um, it, it makes a huge difference. I mm. guess the, the LinkedIn algorithm is looking, you know, they want to get rid of all of these automation um, that people are doing on the platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the algorithms see that you are active straight after you post it, um, they know that you're not a bot. They know you're not using automation tools and they will position you well and okay. your content well for you. So there's a little trick. So actively engage. Um, Tilly, we'll just give you a break for a minute. Let's just move back to Mrs. Moderator. What's going on in the feed? There seems to be um, a bit of a conversation building up. What's going yeah, on, Sarah? What's going on? Um, Aunt Jones loves the idea of the stages of communication. Create engagement and then give them the details. Um, mm. Yeah, like Kieran, that. Tilly, such simple and great advice. Engagement sets a fresh impression with new and existing followers. Um, and builds a positive personal brand on the platform. Yeah. Um, here we go. So Andy Gray, who said he'd got lots to learn, uh, he said that makes awesome sense. I do tend to <laughs> awesome say, sense. I do tend to like to say a lot about other people's stuff. Mm. Um, so it's the timing that's significant. Yeah, and that's great that you're, you know, um, as Tilly said, you know, commenting on other people's stuff is is equally as important as just posting your own stuff, right, Tilly? Yeah, yeah it is. It, 
it's it's important because a, a couple of things happens um andrew you know you you get more opportunity to position yourself as a thought leader remember i said your profile is building your personal brand now a lot of times where people do make a mistake they only want to engage on their ideal client stuff but remember, you're building a personal brand. People need to know who, who you, you are. are. Yeah, spot on. It's not just all about your company, is it? It's also about who it you isn't. are here. And that's where um, your personal profile comes in so powerfully, right, Tilly? Because people get you to know, know something you. that's very, yeah. very dear to me mm. is leadership, you know, is employee benefits and those kind of things. So I would go and comment on those posts and I would look for posts from thought leaders. You know, uh, Simon Sinek has, has sometimes got some great advice and I love to comment on those and I drive huge amount of traffic to my profile. And uh, Simon Sinek's never going to buy anything from me, trust me. <laughs> So, you know, so when Simon says, then your engagement goes up. I love that. <laughs> brilliant. Oh, absolutely but, brilliant. But, um, you know, it's positioning me as, as who I am. What is my values? What do I stand for in business? Those kind of things. I still comment a lot on techie stuff because I enjoy it. Yeah. You know, so um, that's who I am. That's who... who for people to get to know me, you know, if you only focus on your ideal client and your very next lead and marketing qualified lead that you're chasing, you're not going to get it. Okay. You know, so you look you look like a a, a salesman in disguise. <laughs> a person in salesman's clothing. I love that. Um, just very briefly, just give you a, a bit of a break for a moment. There's a, there's there's a few questions building up in the chat i think sarah do you, do you want to come back and just answer some of these questions here there is yes just before we do the questions mm, um jim sure. wolf makes the point he said he thinks linkedin groups are underused yeah um, he's amazed that more linkedin coaches don't talk about them um he's joined three music related groups and some of his posts get as much engagement as the feed he's going to focus on oh so now that's more on yeah. the groups that's interesting because microsoft who took over linkedin in my opinion ruined the groups and they've never really gone back to where they were. But it sounds like from Jim's comment there that you know, they're becoming popular again. What say you, Tilly? Well, the, the problem with LinkedIn groups is most uh, people do not understand it. And I agree, you know, we need to talk about it a lot more. Yeah. Most people view the LinkedIn groups as a dumping ground for their content that nobody wants to read. Yeah, okay. And it is a lot more you know when i want to get more engagement if i'm busy with lead generation i do what i call group work and i go to relevant <laughs> groups where my ideal clients will hang out oh. and that is something that's extremely important you know mm. we all over the show on linkedin but if you find out where does your ideal clients hang out hang even out. if they go and post their content that nobody wants to read on the group they did. And if I start doing a disrupt by not posting content, but by engaging, by asking them questions, by being there as a researcher, learning about my community and asking relevant questions, you're going to get huge amount of engagement from the groups. It is really a gold mine. Really a gold mine. So there we go. Yeah, and I'm missing something on that. And I wonder how many of us here are missing the uh, the, the group thing, you know, returning back to that. So that would be a useful question just to ask you guys, the audience. Sarah, what else is going on? There's something from um, yeah, Maria no, earlier, I think, or something. Yeah, um, Oh, which one are you looking at? Yeah, Maria just mentioned there's a lot of resonance about don't just post and then go off and do something else or schedule it when you're asleep. Um, yeah. You know, take it on board that actually stay and engage when you've posted. Stay and engage. Um, and she mentioned something about a banner somewhere, Sarah. I don't know whether you saw that. There's a question to Tilly there. Oh, that was just a joke, Andrew. You're getting too focused. So the banner oh. shouldn't say I help people. 
Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That conversation's gone and passed. They've gone and passed. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so I'm still stuck on that. So the banner shouldn't say, oh, I help people, right? Oh, oh, obviously not. Obviously not. Um, no. From Kathy Heath, do you think videos get more engagement? Oh, really good question. <clears throat> oh, that is a, I love that question because a lot of people ask me because I do a two to three minute video mm. every single day, coffee with Tilly. Come and have a coffee with me. <laughs> uh, once you're done with Andrew, you can come and have coffee with me. <laughs> um, when it comes to video and the type of content, my advice always is write for your audience, not for the algorithm algorithms it's the same as what we said in the websites and seos you know um putting in keywords in blogs so that you can drive traffic to your website and nobody can read it if video is your style and if that is what you want to do do video i do get engagement on my videos what i do if i see that i'm getting less engagement and it's not as much as what it used to be i will do a second post but then i'll go for the killer posts the twitter posts the quote posts the slideshows those always get a lot of traction oh, and a okay. lot of engagement Right. So That's I would back my video later in the day, maybe with a Twitter post or a slideshow, if I see I lose some. But no, video doesn't do well on LinkedIn. Okay, video doesn't do well on LinkedIn. There we go, folks. Yeah, yeah I've okay. noticed that too. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, Sarah, what it's, else? It's, Thank you. Um, interesting. And, uh, mate sorry sarah it makes sense guys remember we are on a professional platform mm. the ceo is not going to sit and watch a video during the day employees can't watch a noisy video during the day while in the office so um being the platform it is it just makes sense that video is not going to get that much attraction but don't be uh pushed away and say it's not going to work it does work i do my coffee okay. with tillies every day brilliant okay so just be mindful that other posts do better but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do videos if that's your thing yeah okay yeah sarah um, Matthias um made an interesting point he said he attended a seminar with norway's leading linkedin expert in march mm. um, he told him that he's never once sold anything from advertising on linkedin he published posts about his experiences, updated his profile regularly, focused on building relationships with those who engages in his content. Um, Sarah, advertising on LinkedIn doesn't work. Um, it is very, very expensive, um, but organic engagement, posting content, updating your profile, your page, your group, working it as a funnel, those does work. And it's very for a very simple reason. It's a relationship platform. Yeah, it's not advertising. Selling advertising is not building relationships. It's telling people to buy your stuff. Yeah, and it's and expensive. Is, yeah, and that is not what the platform is about. The platform is about building relationships. Um, with uh, collaborators for purposes of collaborating for purposes of um, my electricity just came back. <laughs> hey, we got electricity. <laughs> behind me and I thought, okay, they thought me. <laughs> the lights have come on. Yeah. <laughs> My lights have gone out. <laughs> Brilliant. Sarah, anything else you want to pick up before we move on? Um, yeah, a couple of things from Jim Wolfe. Um, oh, just Jim. going back to this yeah. talk of videos. He said he gets most quality engagement from videos, but then again, he's not targeting CEOs. No. Um, it says, My text posts underperform against videos. So I guess it goes back to what you say. If that's what you do well, yeah, um, and it fits what you're doing, then it you know it can work. He also says he's got a hunch that LinkedIn will focus their development on groups. Ooh. It makes sense as the user base grows, and it's going to be about building a community. Fascinating. What say you, Till? Yeah, there is. Um... A, a lot of noise around upgrades on the groups as well as the pages. And we've seen some of them earlier this year, mm -hmm. you know, That's they had right. added that follow um, option on the pages. There is a lot of noise around um, spending more time 
because um, I think LinkedIn also realized the value that's in the groups for yeah. their users. Um, and the groups is also, they are looking at it because the groups are being abused. And I tell you how, if you have run out of your second connections, uh, invites, yeah. um, because there's a limit, there's another way around. You go to groups and message everybody in the group. Yeah, I found that people are doing that regularly. You know, and that is awful. Mm. I hate it when people do that, but they are doing it to bypass the connection uh, limitations. And I think it's for this reason that LinkedIn is also starting to look at revamping the groups to add more value rather than people either use it as a dumping ground to all you know, use it to um, abuse the, the members of the groups, you know. Um, yeah. I, I think that's great news. Um, I used to love the groups um, in LinkedIn before Microsoft took them over. So I'm really pleased to hear that we're circling and cycling back to that. And we're, you know, um, Microsoft are coming back to the whole group thing. It's huge power in those, particularly if you could post to multiple groups. And I hope that will come back again. Um, because that just makes engagement so much faster as well when you can you know, not just post to one group but several groups at the same time. Um, that might be defeating where Microsoft want to go to, but from a user perspective, it's phenomenal. What say you, Tilly? Yeah, I normally, I normally work three groups at a time. Mm. So I find three groups where my ideal clients hang out. I never, ever post in groups um if i do post in the group it will always be a question that i'm asking okay right. uh, but i w won't post content or try and use thought leadership posts or anything like that my my whole purpose with being in the group is to engage engage and gotcha. um i become a four-year-old on the group <laughs> I think why why <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, you're asking 300 whys a day. That's just great. So, yeah. Tilly, tell us, you know, how do we formulate that killer lead generation? So we've talked a lot about, you know, the, the LinkedIn, the engagement piece. We've looked at groups and we've looked at um, commenting on other people's posts that Catherine's just uh, just um, uh, catching up on. Um, you know, how do we formulate that kind of killer lead generation process that doesn't mean that we're selling our stuff all the time? You know, that's that subtlety that's going on here. How do we attract people to our profile, you know, on a lead generation perspective in that on that basis? Because the two sound like they're counterintuitive, don't they? When we talk about lead generation, we're talking about buy my stuff, right? So what say you, Telly? Okay, uh, Andrew, this is really where this building a sticky brand comes in. Oh, sticky brand. I like that, folks. Sticky brand. Yeah. And within the sticky brand mm. is very simple when you look at building a lead generation strategy on LinkedIn, I like to categorize my ideal clients into two groups. Okay. The first group is very simple. It's your low hanging fruit. And the second group is where you're going to have to put in what I call some elbow grease. You're <laughs> going to have to work. It's not going to come as easy as the low-hanging fruits. Now, to just explain, I think you do have the slide about the um, building a sticky brand. But it, what you need here? to... No, uh, one, one second. There it is. Is that the one there? That is the one. Now, Super. basically, if you take the sticky brand um, process, what you need to understand is... In marketing, you get your moments of truth. Moments and it was truth. really developed by Procter and Gamble. So it's not me that's being clever. Um, but way back in 2004, Procter and Gamble came and they said, you get your first moment of truth. And that is really when um, your ideal client is selecting you as the preferred supplier or provider. So they found you and they decided to go with your business to provide the solution. The second moment of truth is really the buying experience. 
Um, so it is when procurement uh, is starting to happen and the whole onboarding process. And then you get the ultimate moment of truth. They, uh, they're now a customer. And that is really when we start to measure the customer experience. So those were the first three um, moments of truth that um, was mentioned. But then Google turned around and said, hey, guys, you've got all this wrong. <laughs> There's a zero moment of truth. And the zero moment of truth is when they realize they have a problem and they're searching for a solution. So what happens is they will go on to Google and start searching for companies that will provide the solution that they think they, they need. Okay, and this so happens before the first moment of truth. Mm. And then in social media started dabbling into this as well. And they said, okay, now all of you've got this wrong. There's another one here. And this is the less than zero moment of truth. And this is when people do not know they have a problem. And this is really where social media started to play a huge role because you have got the opportunity to educate people that they do have a problem that they didn't know they had. Right. So the whole, the whole process then, Andrew, starts from the zero moment of truth until you get through all four stages and land up at the ultimate moment of truth, which is the customer experience. Now, the fact of the matter is, if you look at the ratio on LinkedIn, and we're talking specifically LinkedIn and not just social media, but it works the same on all social media platforms. Only 10% of your ideal client on LinkedIn are in the first moment of truth or the zero moment of truth. They're ready to buy. They have an intent to change. They're looking for solutions. 90% of your audience on LinkedIn does not know they have a problem and they're not ready to take action. Okay. They don't see that they have a need. They have absolutely zero interest in your business. So what you need to do on LinkedIn as a lead uh, generation strategy, you need to, to find a plan of how you're going to target those 10% first. That's the low hanging fruit. The 90% that you're going to target is where the elbow grease comes in. You've got to build a relationship. You've got to go out and educate them and make them understand that they do have the problem. Because these are the people that will land on your profile and go, oh my word, this sounds interesting. But then they ghost you and they don't <laughs> talk to you. Mm -hmm. And they're just sitting in the background watching you because they're not ready to buy. They don't see the need. They don't understand. You know, why should I do this? I get it so often that I get clients that, are, that become my clients that we had a relationship for two years. Take you and me, Andrew, how long mm -hmm. did it take? Two years, yeah. 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 You weren't in my top 10%. You were in my 90%. Oh, I see, I see. So, you know, and this is why it is so important to focus on building relationships on LinkedIn to post um, valuable content. You don't know who's watching you. True. Yeah. You don't know who's watching you. And as you go through it, you know, um, I made a client last year through the funnel system we created. She, she was a... Um, in my connections for nine years, nine before, years. She became wow. a, before she became a client, nine years, we joked about it all the time. It mm. took her nine years to understand that she has a problem that I could solve for her. But by 
posting valuable content, by building relationships with her, by reaching out to her twice a year. I, I kept that fire going. And if you understand this uh, concept, you're building what I call marketing momentum. So you just keep on working your community. This is why I advocate that it's far more important to get followers than connections. Oh, yeah, okay. Is that one of your the little secrets, followers. is it, Tilly? Uh. Yeah, one of my secrets. You know, the, it's no use having a connection that you're working so hard and you, it takes you nine years before they change their mind. I would rather have someone that follows me that's not going to misuse the privilege of being able to message me and let them just consume my content and let us just engage on each other's content. It adds far more value because by the time that they're ready to buy, they become a connection and we can then i can then push them to the low hanging fruit scenario and start converting them into profitable paying clients but where most people go wrong is they try everybody they try everybody right they try everybody and they don't go out and and start categorizing and see where this person is um, you know, it's something I do in my messaging. I like being honest. Mm. If I start engaging with someone on um, LinkedIn and we connect, I would do a conversation by two or three messages most. And I will then ask the question, are you interested to know how to uh, uh, get clients on LinkedIn? Gotcha. So actually, yeah, that's um, that's really interesting what you've just said there. So, yeah, you're qualifying that person as you're going along by asking more strategic questions. Is that correct, Tilly? I think we might have lost Tilly, actually. <laughs> I think we might have lost Tilly for a moment. Let's just see if she comes back in a moment. Let's bring back Sarah, um, our Mrs. Moderator. What's going on? So we're we waiting for Tilly to catch up with us. <laughs> She's disappeared for She's a moment. She's disappeared. Um, I think Kira makes a really good point. Oh, is Tilly back? Tilly, you're back. Andrew, I lost a little bit of that. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we've got you back. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're just waiting for you to catch up. So don't worry. Yeah, you'll be there in a moment. Oh, we've lost her completely. She'll be in a moment. <laughs> She'll come back in a yeah. minute. Yeah, carry um, on, Sarah. Yeah, Kieran <clears throat> um, just referring to the visual. Um, great visual. And that yeah. it's great. I see 90% is a great opportunity to also network positively through these people who think of you when someone else they know has a problem. I think that's brilliant, isn't it? So yeah. by connecting with people, um, when you might not have the answer, but so if you're talking to somebody and somebody you've connected with, you say, oh, actually, they, they might be useful. So you'll pass that connection on. And it is, it's about relationships, isn't it? That, and I think that's the key thing um, that Tilly's saying here, isn't it? Sorry, Tilly, carry on. No, absolutely. Um, uh, Sarah, you know, um, I like to deal with my connections with all honesty. If you're not mm. clear, interested at this point in time I, in utilizing my services, we can position the relationship. Are you going to be a referral for me? Are we going to introduce each other to other people? Are we going to collaborate? What is this relationship all about? Because not every single person I connect to, even if they fit my ideal client, they might be in the less than zero moment of truth. It's going to take time for them to realize that they do have a problem that I can solve for them. Yeah. And to rather focus on the, the relationship because if a person turns around, if I ask the question directly in the messaging, are you, are you interested in this? And they say, no, I'm not. I said, great. Um, I've noticed this is what you do. Shall we look at our networks and see if we can do some introductions here? How are we going to take this forward and gotcha. add value to each other? Gotcha. Now, that's a really important question, isn't it? Being proactive with one another. And it might be that person isn't ready yet to buy from you because they haven't got a problem, but they may have a problem. And if they know that you have a certain solution to a certain problem and that problem comes up for them, you know, they'll probably come to you, right? Because you're front of mind. And you've yeah, probably no, referred them elsewhere. 
you know, sometimes I'm connected to a person and I, I connect to another person and I ask the question and they say, what I'm really looking for is someone to help me with my business structures, a consultant. And I'll say, well, I've got someone in my network um, that I'm aware of. Uh, do you want me to do the introduction for you? Absolutely. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, indeed. So that's been really proactive, isn't it? And actually, you'll be remembered for that as well, presumably, because you've, you know, you've you've referred that person elsewhere uh, for something that they need, right? It's part of your lead generation strategy, gotcha. Andrew. Because yeah. if I help you, yeah, I'm just watching. Uh, I'm just watching my love cheating. Uh, <laughs> if I if I help you. Yeah. Um, and you can help me. We can get so much out of the platform. Yeah, um, I really like that. And that's part of your lead generation strategy. That's a secret that perhaps not a lot of us know about is actually do that referral piece and do it well. It's not just all about you. Yeah. right? It's about what you do for somebody else who then comes back to you later on. It's, I'm back to what I say. It's not about me. It's about them. Yeah. And the them being the community I'm building on LinkedIn. Yeah. The them not being my ideal client and my very next customer, I'm building a, a huge asset for my business on LinkedIn yeah. because um, real wealth to me, uh, and this is something I believe Grant Cardone also said, real wealth is not in money. Real wealth is in the relationship that you have with people because who has got the money? The That's people. Really yeah, that's fascinating. Brilliant. I, that's that's such a game changer for, for me as well. And I hope for you guys listening. Sarah, let's just give Tilly a quick break and we've got to move on because we're moving to the end of the show now. But what's going on, um, Sarah? Um, a couple of interesting points mm. about um, influencers. Yeah. Um, so Graham Rose. Um, oh, hello, Graham. To suggest a key influencer on LinkedIn would have to be Sean McFeet. He's got 85,000 followers and it reflects the valuable content Sean posts. Yeah, there you go. Okay, thank um, you for that. And let's have a look. There was somebody else. Yeah, Kylie Anderson suggested. Hello, Kylie. Uh, says, I love Russell Brunson when he talks about the top oh, 100 one. plan. Mm. Something like 25 top clients, 25 influencers, 25 networkers and 25 others. Oh, that's quite so, nice, isn't it? That fits in with where you're coming from, Tilly, I think. Mm. Looking at you know a wider thing than just buy my stuff or how am I going to get more sales? You know, actually thinking yeah, about. I'm a, I'm a big follower of Russell Brunson ah, myself. Okay, you know, so there he's we go. Sometimes, he's sometimes got some real gems in his posts. Lovely. Yeah. No. Thank you. And uh, anything else, Sarah? Before we move on. No, but I think just something mm. that is an underlying thought of mine is people so often I think think. LinkedIn will just hop on, we'll do a quick something and it will all miraculously happen because mm. I'm on LinkedIn. And obviously what we're hearing today is you've got to put the time and effort in. You've got to use LinkedIn as part of your day. If you're running a business, you've got to incorporate it as part of your sales plan, not just something that you post and run. Post and run, um, yeah. Because it's just not going to work. Yeah, I like that, post and run. I've just noticed this comment, Sarah. I don't know who this, who's this. Is this Kieran? Uh, worth, worth adding it takes 10 years to become an overnight yes, success yes yes that's kieran absolutely <laughs> brilliant i love that that's just great okay. absolutely fantastic so tilly that kind of probably brings us on to um looking at your um calls to action here so talk us through a couple of things that you've got here for us tilly um the business accelerator evaluation is really one of the things that stands out for me on mm. LinkedIn is um, your success in LinkedIn is going to be um, directly related to your knowledge, your inside information on how well your business is in fact um, doing. You know, there's various aspects in your business and um, working on, on platforms like LinkedIn to generate leads and to grow your business, your business needs to be healthy. Mm. So the Business Accelerator is really just a um, survey based on the scoring system so that you can s 
measure the health of your business, but also to see which areas do you need to focus on. Um, I'm covering a couple of areas in there, like leadership, like um, cash flow, like, um, and so on, you know, oh. tech systems and all of that Very is in there so that you can measure your business on the various aspects that you need, how well is your marketing doing and so on, okay. so that you can have an overview because when you set up your profile, mm. we I always do a full business analysis before we start with optimizing your profile to make sure that you understand if your business is LinkedIn ready. Okay, it's your business LinkedIn ready. I like that. And then you've got this, the sales skill assessment as well. You've got a couple of assessment tools here. Tell us about this one very quickly. Well, the business um, accelerator I always do before I do coaching with people. But the sales assessment is also important because one thing I find is that people go and they do generate leads and they mm. do get marketing qualified leads of LinkedIn, but then they lost and they're not closing deals. Um, selling after you generate leads on LinkedIn is different to cold sales or sales from advertising, you know, where your leads came from. If your leads is coming from LinkedIn, your sales process is different. It's more consultative. Gotcha. So what the sales assessment really do is it scores you and see how well you're doing in your sales processes. Is your problem maybe your sales and not your lead generation on LinkedIn? Brilliant. If you get leads off LinkedIn, you should have an 80% conversion rate in your sales. Wow. Okay. Why should you do something wrong? And this is what the sales assessment is all for. Right. Say that again for us. So we get that point. That sounded quite critical. Say that again for us. The 80% thing. If you get leads off LinkedIn, yep. um, your sales conversion should be 80%. No, 80%. There you go. Okay. And both of those links for the scales, the sales skills assessment and the other assessment um, are in the links now as well. And then finally, just to kind of go through... Um, to his website here, which you'll see um, here, just to boost your LinkedIn sales. This is Tilly's website here, so you can visit that and see what uh, what information she's got here. And Tilly, you're really keen on the coaching aspect at the moment, aren't you, on uh, LinkedIn, on helping people, coaching them through their LinkedIn profile. So if you need help, go to Tilly, right? Yeah, basically, um, Andrew, you know, we started off with a done-for-you service, which we still do for... Mm majority of clients but um for two years now i started dabbling in coaching and i'm really enjoying that because that is something that's my pet project that's in my business project. brilliant yeah i i do all of the coaching myself and i really have so much fun with it it is it is uh, always so gratifying to me when i start coaching people and you know, they go, it's the first time ever that people's talking to me on, on LinkedIn. You know, I, I yeah. absolutely love that. I always start to, um, my coaching with a free consultation. I can't coach everybody. Um, I think if there's any coaches in the, the audience today, you'll know that there are some people, you know, it's just not going to work. Um, I can't coach everybody and get everybody. So I'm, I like to do a free consultation where we really look at your uh, current mm. scenario. We look at your goals, see what is the gap and see if I can help you. Brilliant. I can't help everybody. everybody. So yeah, I get that. You know, so that's that. something I offer today is really um, reach out to me on, on LinkedIn and do a free consultation with me. Brilliant. You know, um, I do a free critique on your profile and your LinkedIn account during the consultation as well. But it might just be very helpful for you to get uh, another pair of eyeballs on, on what you have. <laughs> Brilliant. And, and see. Yeah, thanks, Tilly. That's just great. And it all comes down to chemistry, says Claire Moody. And uh, yeah, brilliant. OK, so um, thank you, Tilly, for another exciting romp through leaders uh, through um, through LinkedIn. And uh, we're going to be coming back and revisiting um, a whole 
an interesting aspect of LinkedIn you know, in the next month or so with Tilly, which is looking at how um, chat GPT and other things link in with LinkedIn, LinkedIn with LinkedIn. So there we go. So that, that's coming up soon as well. And uh, so thank you, Tilly, uh, really useful and what an extraordinary conversation we've had today. So we're, we're heading towards the end now, but very quickly, I um, just wanted to announce this, um, that I've got this. This is the first, I'm really proud of this actually, this is the first webinar um, I'm running uh, called Winning Edge Workshop as a LinkedIn event on how to unlock the potential of high performing team cultures. And that's on the 23rd of June at 12.15 uh, UK time. And that's aimed at business leaders who currently manage a team of people and want the best from it. So um, yeah, and this workshop helps people to crack the code to unleash business success and why, and why high performing teams are so important in the success of today's um, b businesses, particularly Fast Company just did a, a, a quick research that said that they found that 80% of workplaces are toxic. You know, that's quite a massive statistic. You know, made me think, well, you know, is yours um, a, a toxic workplace? Who knows? But that's a big statistic. So, you know, businesses seeking a winning edge will be those that upskill their investment in people to master the art of high performance. So uh, that's what that's all about. So that's coming up on the 23rd of June at 12.15. And if you're a business leader with a team, then um, please please join that. That's great. And the link's in the feed. It's just come through. And uh, very briefly, Sarah, um, well, just before we get on to Sarah, let me just introduce um, the ghost slide before we come into the goosh of what's next week. I'm just trying to find that. Uh, okay. So this is just a little piece on our sponsors, Ghost, and a quick uh, reel of their stuff. So uh, thank you to our sponsors. Great. Well, thank you, Ghost, for being our sponsors. And Ghost are a brand and design agency with an exceptional team of highly skilled and vi vibrant people that help develop and shape brands and inspire businesses just like mine, just like yours. And um, yeah, they're, they're worth worth chatting to about your brand. So um, fantastic. Thank you for being our sponsors. And um, I'm just going to jump to Sarah right now just to kind of finish us up on some Leaders Live stuff, please. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, carry on. Let's, uh, I just, yeah, yeah. amazing um, conversations today. Mm. I think for me, um, I'm probably the generation that it was like, well, Facebook's for your social and LinkedIn's a bit like Facebook, but it's for business. But as we found out, it is so much more. more um, yeah. And we need to really start thinking about what we're doing. Um, so thank you, Tilly. Um Tilly's great. If you've got any questions, she's mm. the she's the go to lady um, with Leaders Live. There's been a couple of comments that people have missed the beginning or they've got to go just to remind you, um, you know, if you've enjoyed it, tell all your friends, yeah. you know, get them to listen to subscribe to Leaders Live because you will get so much more. Um, we've got podcasts, you name it. You can always catch us if you miss the live, catch us up on the podcast. But do try and subscribe because it is just so much easier to access the content. So, yeah, well, tell us what about next week, Andrew. Thank you. OK, so the goose for next week, folks, is, um, you know, you might have spotted this fab graphic on LinkedIn that I posted some time ago by live illustrator Andy Gray, director of One Gray Dot. Um, picturing the content of the show where um, I was being interviewed by Rebecca Jenkins. It was a fantastic session. And here is the graphic of that. I just love that. So thank you very much, Andy. And uh, he's on the show next week, and we hang out with Andy Gray himself. Um, Andy is a very enthusiastic, extremely likeable, and highly skilled artist, musician, and magician, and all sorts of things. So uh, that's the shout-out for next week, folks. So um, don't miss out on that. That's coming out tomorrow. Um, I'll set the event up. We think you're going to love it. And uh, we can't wait, so be there or be square. And we're going to close out now because we're slightly late, so apologies for being slightly late. So we're just going to close out to our banner here. It's been great to hang out with you folks. We're going to wave goodbye to you now. So thank you very much for being uh, listening to us on the show. We've had a great number of people on today. Thank you for joining in. Um, yeah, please get hold of us if you want to. Um, in the meantime, keep the questions coming in the feed and we'll answer those as we're going along. So bye for now and thanks for all. Tilly, thank you very much, Tilly, for being on the show today. Cheers for now, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.